Um, so this is the temple room, and it's our sacred space. Our coven utilizes this temple room for all sorts of ceremonies and uh, rituals and honorings of nature. We honor the moon and the sun and uh, really work with the elements and work on manifesting higher consciousness. So we've got our earth altar here. This is the altar to earth, to north, to all the spirits of the north, everything that represents earth. And if we move from here, clockwise, we get to the eastern altar, and this represents air. East is the direction that the sun rises, so we draw a lot of solar energy from this point. And in neo-pagan tradition, the south represents fire, so we've got our fire altar here at the south. <laughs> And the final element is water, and water is ruled by the West. So here's our Western altar. The West rules psychic power, emotions, intuition. Over time, I got the calling to become a priest and an author, and just kind of went with that and it seems to be working out really well so far. It's very flattering sometimes. I'm glad that I can be really influential in a lot of people's lives. My first book was called Gothcraft, and that combined ideas of the Gothic subculture and Wicca and neo-paganism. So it's kind of a crossover book. My second book is more shamanic, and it's called Shadow Magic Compendium. And it's looking at the darker aspects of magic um, in a positive sense, in a progressive sense how a person can look at their own darkness and find empowerment from there. But part of running a community is finding what works for each individual member involved. Many of the Sabbaths are ancient pagan holidays and many are more modern interpretations of ancient harvest festivals. And in the Wiccan and pagan um, structure of the year called the Wheel of the Year, there are eight holidays that are recognized. And we celebrate those holidays in ancient and modern ways. There's a lot of revelry and love and um, connection to nature. And a lot of the time our group gets up to 20 people attending rituals, which is really fun. And when we're celebrating with the wheel of the year, the point is to really attune yourself to nature and both the light and the dark seasons of the natural tide. So there's light and dark in everybody. It's just a matter of finding that and knowing what it is in each person. Um, the earth gives us everything that we need. All sorts of healing herbs, uh, everything that we need to balance ourselves out, our bodies, our minds, our spirits. Nature is full of medicine and we don't need to rely on pharmaceutical companies to tell us what is the best medicine. But at the same time, I can't prescribe herbs. Nobody in my coven can actually prescribe. We can recommend things for people. We can try to help people get that healing naturally. And sometimes our counselings are based on that. We do a lot of herbal magic. Basically every herb has physical and metaphysical properties. You name it. There's an abundance, a plethora of materials that this earth gives us that we can all use for our benefit. Things like cloves, which are used in baking, have extreme magical powers for exercising, is for projecting. Um, the cloves are like little arrows. They represent the projective. For example, we have eyebright and people can use this herb medicinally for issues of the eye. A big part of what we do is make blends for people that are specific to their need. You know, I give a lot of tarot readings and counselings, and um, it seems to be really accurate. I get a lot of really positive feedback about the tarot readings, and my priestess and a couple other members of our coven give spiritual counsellings too. I'm a role model whether I like it or not. We all have the power for magic and manifestation.